Let me get, let me get, whoa, 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 whoa. That, bro, he's eating something. The hell, that's so creepy. Close around Christmas time, like right after Christmas. I guess after Christmas. Looks like that used to be a Blue Bill ice cream. Just the looks of them, you know. Pretty dang amazing. Only thing I could think of is maybe they're on the phone with somebody and they could maybe get what they're record their voice. You can see it on the tile here. Subway tile on the walls. Grimy and bombing table. The Rochester Industrial Rapid Transit Railway, more commonly known as the Rochester Subway, was a light rail rapid transit line in the city of Rochester, New York from 1927 to 1956. The subway was constructed in the bed of the old Erie Canal, which allowed the route to be grade separated for its entire length. The subway was designed to reduce interurban traffic on city streets and to facilitate freight interchange between the railroads. However, the final day of passenger service was on June 30th, 1956. Now saying that, have you ever stopped to wonder what an abandoned subway tunnel would look like? Well, thanks to some urban explorers, we now know. This picture was taken by a group exploring the dark tunnels in Rochester, New York, and it gives a pretty disturbing idea about what might be down there. All we can see is the dark, bleak walls and some kind of hazmat suit hanging from the ceiling. Very chilling, very chilling indeed. Coming in at number four, Abandoned Doll Factory, Spain. I don't know about you, but I don't think many people would jump at the opportunity to explore an abandoned doll factory. A dark, derelict building with hundreds of molds and casts stacked against the barren walls, over tables and on shelves. However, thanks to one brave urban explorer, they explored the dark halls of this Spanish doll factory in Valencia. According to the photographs taken, the now deserted factory is spread out over three stories, with a large staircase running up the main tower. It is a creepy building with even creepier pictures. One man even took the time to warn potential visitors not to go there, citing his fears about a potential curse. I quote, do not enter the factory, seriously. I took a doll's head and a box and I had to return it. Now that sight gives me a strong anxiety. There have been rituals. Now the picture itself shows a row of doll's heads which were known as bisque dolls. They were at the peak of their popularity between 1860 and 1990 and were intended as fashion items, created to represent women and adorned with wigs made from mohair or human hair. The picture is absolutely terrifying, with some of the dolls having a blank stare while others seem as though they are frowning. Regardless Regardless of the expression, these dolls are absolutely terrifying. Coming in at number three, Purple Garment, Belitz Hillstatten Hospital. Built in 1898, Belitz Hillstatten Hospital is a now disused hospital complex of approximately 60 buildings located in the district of Belitz Hillstatten. Between the years of 1898 and 1930, the complex served as a sanatorium for lung diseases, generally housing those with then fatal conditions. During World War I, it served as a field hospital that treated the earliest casualties of new weapons such as machine guns and mustard gas. During this time, it also treated a young soldier named Adolf Hitler, who had been blinded by a British gas attack and wounded in the leg at the Battle of Somme. During World War II, the hospital went on to be used as a Nazi field hospital, treating injured soldiers. Occupied by the Russians in 1945, it served as a Soviet military hospital for the next 50 years until 1995. The complex is now derelict and is the perfect stomping ground for urban explorers, as you would expect. This is just one of many creepy pictures taken in the abandoned hospital. We don't know who the purple garment belonged to, but seeing it strung up with shoes placed under it makes it incredibly unnerving. I think I would rather not know the backstory behind this picture. Coming in at number two, fire extinguishers, West Park Hospital. West Park Hospital, sometimes referred to as West Park Asylum, was a large psychiatric hospital in Epsom, Surrey. The hospital seems to have been so called because of its location to the west of the landscaped parkland formerly associated with Horton Manor. Now, although it is sometimes referred to as an asylum by urban explorers and the media, West Park was never officially termed as such, having opened as West Park Mental Hospital in 1923. During operation, the hospital catered for around 2,000 patients of mixed class, however, it was slowly run 
down from the mid-1990s, and by 2003, most of the hospital was closed and derelict, although some buildings, including the new Epson and Ewell Cottage Hospital, remain in use by NHS healthcare services. Due to its derelict state, it came to be of interest to urban explorers who were drawn in by its sheer size, and also the many hospital items still inside, such as beds, kitchen equipment, as well as personal items. Now, this picture from the attic of the hospital is sure to send chills down your spine. Discovered by an urban explorer, they reportedly found these fire extinguishers arranged in a pentagram form. Sure makes you wonder what was really going on in the hospital. However, in November 2010, demolition began on the former hospital buildings. As of April 2011, most of the central buildings had been cleared, with only limited number of wards, the water tower and administration building being retained for conversion to apartments. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Dolls, Chernobyl. As most will know, thanks to the popular HBO series Chernobyl, the Chernobyl disaster was a nuclear accident that happened on April 26th 1986 at the number four nuclear reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat in the north of Ukraine, SSR. It is considered to be the worst nuclear disaster in history and is one of only two nuclear energy disasters rated at seven, the maximum severity. The accident began during a safety test on the RBMK type nuclear reactor, which was commonly used throughout the Soviet Union. The test, however, failed and a large amount of energy was released, vaporizing superheated cooling water and rupturing the reactor in a highly destructive steam explosion. In the accident's aftermath, 237 people suffered from acute radiation sickness, of whom 31 died within the first three months. To this day, Pripyat lies abandoned, with the Chernobyl facility haunting its landscape. The city had many abandoned kindergartens, such as the Zolotoj Kluchik or Golden Key. Now, the thought of a kindergarten so close to a nuclear disaster site is absolutely heartbreaking. The idea of small, innocent children being exposed to radiation, which will likely kill them is devastating. However, what is absolutely soul-crushing and at the same time chilling is this photo of a plastic doll with grey hair completely naked except for a gas mask. It appears to be splayed out among the remains of a rusty bed abandoned like the rest of the city, slowly taken a hold by nature. The entire thing sends chills down my spine. Coming in at 5, Hashima Island, Japan. Hashima Island is an abandoned island lying about 15 kilometers from the city of Nagasaki in southern Japan. It is one of 505 uninhabited islands islands in Nagasaki Prefecture. The island's most notable features are its abandoned concrete buildings, undisturbed except by nature and the surrounding sea wall. While the island is a symbol of the rapid industrialization of Japan, it is also a reminder of its history as a site of forced labor prior to and during the Second World War. The island reached a peak population of 5,259 in 1959, and in 1974, with the coal reserves nearing depletion, the mine was closed and all of the residents departed soon after, leaving the island effectively abandoned for the following three decades. Interest in the island then re-emerged in the 2000s on account of its undisturbed historic ruins, and it gradually became a tourist attraction. The island is increasingly gaining international attention, not only generally for its modern regional heritage, but also for the undisturbed housing complex remnants representative of the period from the Taisho period to the Showa period. It has become a frequent subject of discussion among enthusiasts for ruins. Since the abandoned island island has not been maintained, several buildings have collapsed, mainly due to typhoon damage, and other buildings are in danger of collapse. However, some of the collapsed exterior walls have been restored with concrete. The island was formally approved as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in July 2015, as part of Japan's sites of Japan's Meiji Industrial Revolution, iron and steel, shipbuilding, and coal mining. In at four, Eastern State Penitentiary, Pennsylvania. The Eastern State Penitentiary, also known as ESP, is a former prison in Philadelphia that was operational from 1829 until 1971. The penitentiary refined the revolutionary system of separate incarceration, first pioneered at the Walnut Street Jail, which emphasized principles of reform rather than punishment. Notorious criminals such as Al Capone and bank robber Willie Sutton were also hurled inside its innovative wagon wheel design. Originally, inmates were housed in cells that could only be 
be accessed by entering through a small exercise yard attached to the back of the prison. Only a small portal, just large enough to pass meals, opened onto the cell blocks. And the design in turn proved impractical, and in the middle of construction, cells were constructed that allowed prisoners to enter and leave the cell blocks through metal doors that were covered by a heavy wood door to filter out noise. Some believe that the doors were small so prisoners would have a harder time getting out, minimizing an attack on a security guard. Others have explained the small doors forced the prisoners to bow while entering their cells. This design is related to penance and ties to the religious inspiration of the prison. The prison was one of the largest public work projects of the early republic, and was a tourist destination in the 19th century. Visitors spoke with prisoners in their cells, proving that inmates were not isolated, though the prisoners themselves were not allowed to have any visits with family or friends during their stay. The prison is now abandoned, however it operates as a museum and historic site, open year round. However, those who have visited have noted a weird presence inside its walls, and it is said that its former inmates haven't quite left the building yet. In at number 3, Aniva Rock Lighthouse, Russia The Aniva Lighthouse was built by the Japanese in 1939 on a chunk of rock off the southern coast of Sakhalin, just east of Russia. The island was largely uninhabited until the 1800s when both Japan and Russia became interested in annexing it. A ring of lighthouses were built on Sakhalin's rocky coast to signal incoming troop carriers and merchant ships. After around 50 years of sharing the island, the Russians annexed it all in the Second World War, causing half a million Japanese to be evacuated back to Hokkaido. In 1951, the Treaty of San Francisco was signed, officially handing tenure over to the Russians. Now the Aniva Lighthouse is abandoned, including its seven stories of diesel engines, accumulator rooms, keepers' living spaces, radio facilities, storerooms, large clockwork pendulum, and 300 kg pool of mercury. The place now looks like the perfect location for a horror movie, with the building completely deteriorating upon the rock due to the force of the water and wind. However, if you want to visit, you can. Regular tours are organized from Sakhalin's main city. During this six day journey, tourists can not only visit the lighthouse, but also enjoy the views of the city. Coming in at number two, Willard Asylum, New York. The Willard Asylum for the Chronic Insane is a former state hospital in Willard, New York, near Seneca Lake. The asylum was originally meant to rescue mentally ill people from county facilities where they were typically kept, often chained up or in cages. At Willard, the idea was that patients could be treated and hopefully rejoin society. In reality, Willard was more of a prison than it was a hospital, with patients being kept until the administrators decided they could leave. However, many never did. Worse still, not everyone who found themselves in the asylum were actually insane. Now, as of today, Willard is abandoned, but much of it still remains. The bowling alley built inside its walls during the later years is still standing, with several decaying pins remaining at the end of the lanes. The morgue is also still intact, with the autopsy tables in place next to the drawers where the bodies were stored. Now, in those days when a person died, it was shameful to have one's family name on the grave of a mental hospital. As such, out of respect, none of the graves were marked. Today, efforts are underway to find out who is buried in the graves and replace numbers with names. In the attic is where things have been unearthed, though. In 1995, the same year the asylum closed, hundreds of suitcases were discovered in the attic. They had been left behind by the patients who never left the asylum. More than half of the 50,000 patients that came to Willard died within its walls, making this building one of the scariest in history. And finally, coming in at number one, Pripyat, the Chernobyl abandoned city. Yes, we're discussing an entire city with this one, not just one specific building, because honestly, there are way too many. Pripyat is a ghost city in northern Ukraine, near the Ukraine Belarus border. The city was founded on February 4th, 1970, as the ninth nuclear city in the Soviet Union to serve the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It was officially proclaimed a city in 1979 and had grown to a population of 49,360 by the time it was evacuated. Evacuated on the afternoon of April 27, 1986, the day after the Chernobyl disaster. The Chernobyl disaster was a nuclear accident that occurred on the 26th of April, 1986, at the number four nuclear reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat in the north of the Ukrainian SSR. It is to this day considered the worst nuclear disaster in history and is one of only two nuclear energy disasters rated at seven, the maximum severity on the International Nuclear Event Scale. 
fail. The accident began during a safety test on an RBMK type nuclear reactor which was commonly used throughout the Soviet Union. During this test a large amount of energy was suddenly released vaporizing superheated cooling water and rupturing the reactor core in a highly destructive steam explosion. This was immediately followed by an open air reactor core fire that released considerable airborne radioactive contamination for about 9 days that precipitated onto parts of the USSR and Western Europe before finally being contained on May 4th 1986. Due to the radiation left behind the entire city was evacuated and all that remains are the abandoned buildings and a haunting ferris wheel standing motionless in time. It had been scheduled to have its official opening 5 days after the disaster, in time for May Day celebrations. The Azure Swimming Pool and Avonhard Stadium are two other popular tourist attractions. You can only stay there 2 hours otherwise you die. Number 5. Eastern State Penitentiary Starting off the list is Eastern State Penitentiary. It was a prison built in Philadelphia that wanted to stand out from the rest of the American penal system, trying out a new method of punishment called the Pennsylvania system. Well do tell, what is the Pennsylvania system? It's not pleasant and has absolutely nothing to do with cheesesteaks. The Pennsylvania system refers to imposing the prisoners to solitary confinement all of the time, 24-7. The prisoners lived alone ate alone, exercised alone, and were only ever allowed to interact with prison guards. When they were being transported or moved around the prison, the guards would make them don black hoods. Guess it's not nearly as sunny in Philadelphia as Frank Reynolds would have you believe. Now this might not surprise you, but this was not a terribly popular system with inmates. The miserable conditions made the inmates lives horrendous, but the prison didn't care too much. The system only ended up collapsing in 1913 due to overcrowding in the prison. But Eastern State didn't let this stop them from acting sadistically, and really if anything just inspired them to get a little more creative. Prisoners would have their tongues chained to their wrists. Unruly troublesome prisoners would be chained to chairs for days on end. They would douse prisoners in freezing cold water. And perhaps worst of all, would trap prisoners into a pit they affectionately nicknamed the hole, where they'd be kept in the darkness for weeks on end. I'm really not sure if that's any better than the original system. In 1970, after decades of terrorizing its inmates, Eastern State let the last of its inmates free and closed the gates permanently, only to crack them back open a little bit as a tourist location, reopening its walls as a haunted attraction. Due to its horrific history and ominous atmosphere, the prison was rebranded as a haunt, with legends saying that you'll hear all kinds of disembodied laughter, screaming and crying, ghostly figures, shadows moving across the wall, and unexplained footsteps. And if you're looking for more scary stories about prisons or really about anything, then you're at exactly the right place. Stay subscribed to Top 5 Scary for more new scary videos every day. Number 4. Ohio State Reform Ohio State is the picture of a perfect prison. I mean, literally, it was the set for the Shawshank Redemption, so it's kind of a big deal in the prison world. The prison first opened its gates in 1890 and was initially an intermediate penitentiary, a facility for first-time offenders who were deemed too violent to be in other prisons. The inmates were taught basic trades for release and reintegration. However, the prison population started to swell too much by the 20th century, and the reformatory was forced to accept inmates convicted of serious crimes. While day-to-day -day operations were too terribly out of the norm for any other prison, one event in the 1930s may have contributed greatly to the paranormal rumors surrounding it. In the late 1930s, a riot broke out in the East Cell Block, and as punishment, the guards rounded up 120 rioters to share 12 solitary confinement cells together for a week without any food or water. Obviously, this led to multiple, multiple prisoners passing away, and even more being broken down to the point of madness. Just outside the prison stands 215 numbered graves, a monument to all the horror that the prison had experienced over the years. Since then, the prison itself has reformed, rehabilitating itself much like Eastern State as a haunted house. Visitors and tour guides who walk through Ohio State report feeling inexplicable chills while walking through the prison's walls. Witnesses say they hear cell doors slam and see dark figures. Those brave enough are welcome to take the prison's tour and attempt to track down spirits of their own, or if you're feeling particularly festive for the Halloween season, you can try the Haunted Prison Experience, a guided tour replete with animatronics and actors for that haunted house feel. Number 3. Missouri State 
Penitentiary. Once dubbed the bloodiest 47 acres in America, it is no surprise at all that Missouri State Pen is home to all kinds of rumors to be haunted by the souls of its former inmates. The prison was nicknamed The Walls, and shortly after its construction was already home to 2,000 inmates, doubling that size in the progressing years. The prison was home to several, several riots and escape attempts, with the most infamous attempt occurring in 1954, when some 2,500 inmates participated in a massive day-long riot. Four buildings burned and the National Guard was called in. Shockingly out of this, only four inmates were fatally injured during this event, and none managed to escape, lending to the prison's hard reputation. Now, the prison has always been reported to be haunted, even during its operation, with both guards and inmates during its service claiming to see spectral apparitions. Most of the ghost stories come out of the prison's oldest building, the A Building, home to some of the crueler punishments, including an underground room called the Dungeon, a dank, hostile basement with a low ceiling forcing prisoners into a subservient position where the only light that could be observed was a slit through the door. Modern visitors to the dungeon complain of the disgusting odor of bodies that's pungent and they feel like they're being watched. Disembodied voices have even been picked up by EVP monitors while wandering through the dungeon. In the control room, visitors report occasionally seeing a spirit called Fast Jack, a medical practitioner from the prison's operating days, who can be seen appearing as a ghastly figure holding a clipboard and a white lab coat, frantically scurrying around the control room trying to carry out some duty from when he was alive, slamming lockers and opening doors. Several ghost hunting groups over the years have investigated the Missouri State Pen, including legendary ghost hunting hero Zach Baggins and the Ghost Adventures crew, finding mysterious voices and what looked like shadow people wandering the halls. Although the bloodiest 47 acres in America might have dried up and the walls are now open to the public, for the inmates who are still impounded there, it's as terrifying as ever. Number 2. West Virginia Penitentiary Almost heaven. West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, and haunted prisons. The Appalachians might be home to one of the most beautiful parts of the United States, but West Virginia Penitentiary is anything but. In 1863, after West Virginia seceded from Virginia Classic, the new fledgling state needed its own prison, and Moundsville, West Virginia, was chosen as the home for their new state pen. The prison's conditions were unlivable. West Virginia Pen frequently made the department of Justice's top 10 violent prisons in the country. Idea for a new video. An infamous spot in the prison was known as the Sugar Shack, a small rec room for the inmates that served as a hotbed for all kinds of violent illegal activity. The prison is also home to a famous electric chair that an inmate was forced to build, nicknamed Old Sparky. Old Sparky is still standing there today. In the 1950s, the prison was so overcrowded that three prisoners at a time would be shoved into one cramped seven by five foot cell. The men were kept like animals in cages. Riots and violent outbursts were fairly commonplace. The prison was overcrowded, dilapidated and run down, and staffed by overwhelmed guards. Eventually, the prison would be forced to open its gates, decommissioning as a prison and shipping all of its inmates elsewhere. The building still stands and is used as a training facility for law enforcement officers, but it's been said that the spirits of those whose lives ended here still wander. Hunters report equipment malfunctioning walking by the sugar shack or any of the cell blocks where the more violent inmates were housed. Reports of banging on the walls late at night, as well as random screams are fairly commonplace too. The prison was reportedly haunted while inmates still populated it, with some of the earliest stories of hauntings stemming from the 1930s. It's thought that the prison was built on top of an indigenous gravesite of the Adena people, which has led to some speculation as perhaps an explanation for the hauntings. Like most of the prisons on this list, if you're curious enough yourself, West Virginia Penn is available to visit for tours, and you can even pop by the Sugar Shack and Old Sparky. And finally, number one, Alcatraz. Alcatraz might very well be the United States' most infamous prison. On Alcatraz Island, just outside of San Fran, lies the notorious jail, built to house America's most deadly inmates, like Al Capone, Arthur Barker, or George Kelly. It was home to a legendary breakout that was made into a film, Escape from Alcatraz, and also set the stage for Michael Bay's action classic, The Rock, which was about breaking into Alcatraz. The prison was built to drain the hope out of inmates, to break the spirits of the most rebellious inmates, and was legendary for its awful conditions. Tiny cramped cells, indifferent guards, and frequent bouts of violence and riots were all commonplace. It was once referred to as 
the great garbage can of San Francisco, where every other federal prison dumped their worst apples. So it's no surprise, given its brutal conditions, that the island is home to several spirits and hauntings from souls that just can't move on. Most ghost investigators report that the hottest spot for paranormal activity in the building is cell 14D, a cell that was also nicknamed the hole. Gotta wonder if they borrowed that from Eastern State. It was where the most unruly prisoners would be kept when they were being difficult. It's been said that even walking by 14D, you'll immediately feel something's wrong, as if a dark presence or energy is in the room with you. An inmate once spent his last days in 14D, screaming that he was being hunted by an otherworldly creature. Visitors report hearing crying and moaning while walking through cell blocks A, B, and C, where most of the population would have been kept. It's said that a ghost named The Butcher walks through these halls after an inmate named Butcher Malkowitz, a mob hitman, was whacked by another inmate. Now, if this isn't enough haunting for you, some dark tourists also report hearing discordant, disembodied banjo strumming, thought to be a holdover from the spirit of Al Capone, who used to play his banjo in the prison band. Although the prison was decommissioned in 1963, it reopened shortly after, now as a museum and a haunted tour popular with Bay Area locals and visitors curious about learning about one of America's darkest prisons and perhaps its most haunted. Visit if you dare, but just make sure you're able to leave. Coming in at number five, we've got the Ground Church Tower. Take one look at this ominous tower poking out of the water and tell me it's not cursed or filled with treasure, and the treasure is cursed. Sure, it's a church, and churches are places of peace and light, but this one has a tragic story behind it. It was once a lovely place of worship located in South Tyrol, Italy. Folks would come and participate in some pretty average church activities. However, in the 50s, major change was on the horizon. The town needed a new source of energy. In the end, they decided that building an artificial lake would be the way to go. They filled a wide expanse with water and ended up flooding the church. I suppose it was cheaper just to leave some of the buildings as they were instead of demolishing them first. The result is stunning and a little bit ominous. These days, you can see the bell tower peeking out from the top of the water. The rest of the church is down below, wallowing in the murky depths. It sort of feels like a water level in a video game with plenty to explore and frustration abound. I mean, imagine descending into the depths and wading through the many waterlogged chambers hidden below. There could be anything waiting down there. Spirits of wildlife that may have been caught up in the artificial lake. The long lingering ghosts of old churchgoers doomed to float about. It's fascinating and fear-inducing. Coming in at number four, we've got the Sorrento Abandoned Mill, another Italian cursed building. If you ever visit Naples, you can take a day and head off the beaten path. A canyon nearby is known as the Valley of the Mills and houses all sorts of awesome structures. Ages and ages ago, a flour mill was built. For years, it operated, providing flour to the surrounding regions. In fact, it apparently managed to do so for hundreds of years. And if you're at all familiar with the operation of mills before standard safety practices were introduced, you know they were death traps. So for hundreds of years, folks toiled away, grinding out flour and occasionally some workers. Uh-oh. Now, these deaths didn't mean that the mill had to close, it was seen as an occupational hazard of sorts. But then, in the late 19th century, it became isolated from the sea. Tasso Square was built, and this caused the mill to become less practical. Humidity rose in the area, and the mill was forced to shut down. Years later, the building was ultimately closed for good. So we've got a historic mill in a valley closed due to societal progress. Sounds like recipe for ghosts or a curse to me. If you look at it these days, you'll agree. The mill has been totally overtaken by nature. Greenery has consumed the ancient structure, giving it a foreboding and abandoned look. Moss and lichens cover pretty much every square inch of the walls, essentially daring anyone to come and explore. But be careful if you do, it's hard to tell what might be hidden among the foliage. Maybe a mill worker's ghost missing some essential limbs, or a foreman who lost everything when the grindstone stopped grinding. I hope it was worth it. Progress. Coming in at number three, we've got the New Bedford Orpheum. Abandoned theaters are cursed as a rule. Like, name one abandoned theater that doesn't have a ghost or urban legend attached. I'll wait. They're magnets for drama, it's in their nature. And this Massachusetts-based art house has a flair for the dramatic like no other. Get this, it opened on the same day that the Titanic went down. Talk about a hot start. It operated for a few decades, showing movies and hosting cultural events. The Orpheum was a staple of local culture at the time. However, in 1958, it closed its doors. Not for good, mind you. It would still open on occasion for extra special events and was even used by a tobacco company as storage for a little while. But these days, the Orpheum is still and silent. 
ghostly even. A peek inside will reveal a gigantic sprawling space complete with mezzanine, private boxes, and faded murals. The peeling paint and crumbling plaster add to the spooky ambiance. A total lack of audience for ages makes for an echoey good time too. It's everything an old theater should be, including the creepiness. It's decrepit without being condemnable, which has led the community to rally behind efforts to reopen it. However, none of these have been very successful. It seems like the curse extends out, hitting the folks who would even attempt to resurrect it. Would you take a seat in the audience, or are you scared of seeing an unscheduled show? Coming in at number two, we've got the Sathorn Unique Building. A monument to what could have been the Sathorn Unique Building is an interesting case. What was supposed to be a luxurious high-rise apartment building ended up being an abandoned husk perfect for urban explorers. Back in the 90s, a magnificent tower was planned. It was to be 47 stories tall with over 600 units housing all sorts of high rollers in Bangkok. Unfortunately, construction had to stop during the 1997 Asian financial crisis. The building itself was about 80% done, but would never be finished in its entirety. Plenty of money, materials, and man hours were sunk with nothing to show for it. Well, Almost nothing. These days, the Sathorn Unique is known as the Ghost Tower. Thrill seekers and graffiti artists love the sprawling building and have pretty much made it their own. The inside is totally filled with spray-painted murals and other forms of street art. Sure, it's dangerous to go running around in abandoned buildings, but try telling that to any of the folks who do it. Aside from the generally unsavory reputation of street art and urban exploring, why is it known as the Ghost Tower? Well, some locals believe the building was built on the site of an ancient graveyard. This unfortunate placement led the construction delays, accidents, and the eventual abandonment. This story is enough to keep anyone but the bravest out of the ghost tower. Another theory is that the building casts shadows on the nearby Wat Yad Nawa, an old Buddhist temple. This, while not being worthy of an outright curse, was considered to be unfavorable. Success is hard to achieve while preventing sunlight from reaching Buddhist temples. Recently, the building has achieved some sort of online fame with many viral videos featuring folks free running throughout the tower. This resulted in criminal charges being filed against the trespassing videographers. Is that the result of bad luck or a curse? <laughs> 